The final destination of this aquarium was absolutely phenomenal. But the road to get there was bumpy. Let me explain. Now you'll remember the couple of 180 gallon tanks that I built into the wall that I also built. Then I covered those walls with a cool wallpaper. Obviously the standing logs I added looked amazing and complemented the wall perfectly. I did this during the construction phase though, and I was just excited to see what it would look like, and I was on a one track mine. Once construction was done, reality set in. I've done this before. You know, the standing log tank with a planted bottom, discus and tetras. And no doubt that tank was absolutely beautiful and easily one of my favorite tanks. But to be fair, been there, done that. Now I have to admit, I've had another idea for years and it's haunted me. An idea that just kept lingering. I'll be honest, I had to taste, I had to take the logs out and chase that idea. Now let me start this off by saying my favorite planted aquarium of all time was actually just a manzanita with moss covering it. And I know what you're thinking, simple yet stunning or at least you better the way the falling wood laid perfectly in the tank and the moss completely covered it was simply amazing to see now i didn't want to recreate that exact tank but it did kind of fit the theme of the new tank idea that i had in mind yet i didn't have a piece of wood that kind of matched what i wanted to do so what do we do when something's not available we build it. My idea was to create a centerpiece using a few spare manzanita logs and some zip ties. I came up with a center focused piece. Now the zip ties are made of plastic. They're going to last in the aquarium forever and they're going to maintain this shape forever. This piece ended up being four feet long and around 18 inches wide and two feet tall. Perfect for the aquarium that it's going into. The perfect piece to still allow the fish to swim all around it while staying easy to maintain. My favorite aquarium plants of all time, Anubius, Java Moss, Java Fern. Largely because I don't need a planted substrate or I could put them in one. I can attach them into anything, but the biggest thing is I can't kill them. And moss in any aquarium is absolutely phenomenal so i had to attach it. now i have shown a couple of ways to attach moss in the past whether you're doing it to rocks or wood or whatever you want to do it both with glue and sewing string while gluing gives an immediate and permanent solution i found the moss grows slower and sometimes dies off a bit before it recovers with sewing string it takes much longer to apply but the results end up being much faster in terms of growth and turnaround time you can manually remove the string once the moss attaches to the wood and or rock or substrate or whatever you're attaching it to, or over time, it's simply going to disintegrate. I only covered the wood in patches of moss. Plants are expensive, but with moss, it's eventually gonna cover the entire piece of wood anyways. I took that wood with all that moss all over it and added it to the tank. But then something happened. I hated it. Something was off about it. Was it too much? Was it not enough? Am I just trying to do something I like and make sure everybody else likes it as well? Yeah, it was the latter. See, if I'm going to keep the fish that I really want to keep in this fish long term, I need to do not only what I really want, but what I know works long term. Basically, a tank on my terms. And you know what that means. The sand has gotta go. But with the sand gone, <laughs> I hated it even more. But how do you keep a bare bottom tank while kind of still making it look good? You know, you want the benefits, you just don't want, sometimes it's an acquired taste. Obviously one option is to paint the bottom. Technically the outside bottom, but clearly this isn't an option. They're built into the walls. And since I couldn't do that, the next best thing, and something that's arguably better, tile it. You've seen me do that a few times in past tutorials. Almost fed on the wrong side. Go guys. I 
I was then left with a tiled, bare bottom, planted discus aquarium. The dream was now a reality and I'm absolutely in love with it, but why later in the video? Because we're not done just yet. Of course, I can't be happy with the two breeding pair of discus that I added. You see, historically, I've only ever kept the same strain of discus in the same aquarium. Tyrese is over there. God. That was of course to focus on breeding and you know, not really cross the strains, you know, and have them kind of muddy down and water down what they look like. So I've literally never had a true variety of discus living in the same tank besides my proven breeding pairs. But it seems sometimes the fish gods are watching over me. And that is when my phone rang. Oh. Hello. It was Jeff from One Fish, Two Fish in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. And he immediately says, the Bangkok fish list is here. Ooh. That list is our favorite list. It has all the cool fish on it. And before I can get another word in, he starts listing off all the fish that he thinks that I should get. To be fair, I sometimes think he lives vicariously through me. Wait, 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 wait. Well, I'd love to, but I, I've definitely got to be more responsible and only get what I really want. Are there any red tails on the list? You know I need them for the aquaponic system. And he said yes. Okay, get me two, but that's all I need. As always, he responds with one word when I say I need something. He says, done. Okay, but I am curious, are there any discus on the list? He laughed and he's like, a ridiculous amount. Good, get me 20. Then we spent what must have been the next hour, you know, going over the list, seeing what they have, and then he brings up the idea of, what about a hand-picked variety box? And I thought to myself, how does he know? This is almost meant to be. So I only had one thing I had to say to him. Do it. And well, they land next week. 20 hand-picked variety discus. I don't know what's coming. I don't know how many of what. I don't know their condition. I, it's incredibly exciting to think we're gonna have a really interesting and fun display of discus in a bare bottom tile planted tank. It's absolutely phenomenal. And while I'd love to sit here for the remainder of the evening, I suspect you guys want to know a little bit more about that tank and what's going on with it. Let's do it. First and foremost, depending on the size of discus that come in, my breeding pairs are going to have to go back into breeding tanks. Uh, the first thing was the male pigeon blood was an absolute beast, multiple times larger than these guys and was picking on everybody. So he's one in one of my breeding tanks still. Uh, I'm going to likely move, uh, well, I have to move the female with him and the other two. I'm just letting them kind of settle in uh, within a few days. I, I also want to keep the tank cycled and waste going through it for the new fish. But in a few days, I'm likely, depending on the size of these new discus that come in, going to have to move them which isn't a problem. It's like I get to have my cake and eat it too. I've got my breeding discus, plus I have an awesome variety tank of discus as well. Now let me explain why I love this skate. First and foremost, a tiled bottom. We went with like a brown coloration, just to kind of keep with a earthy theme. A few river stones that I found locally, and of course that mound of wood that we created. It's perfect. We're gonna take a look at it from a few different directions. Obviously, it looks bigger from the front than it actually is. The discus will be able to swim all the way around it and up and through it. Yet, having some visual blocks on either side. If we're on this side, we can't see the other discus yet they can swim around it in every direction and so can we, we can enjoy it from every direction. I love the idea of putting these tanks in these walls. Having a planted bare bottom discus tank, it's an interesting concept, isn't it? And some people will be like, well, that's not a true uh, planted tank. It's more of a tank with plants. On the contrary, I would qualify it as a planted tank. There's plenty of plants in here and at some point, oh, once we upgrade the lights, 
and add one of my 10 pound CO2 tanks to it, this tank would definitely look like a planted aquarium. But here's the benefit of doing it this way. First and foremost, with not a substrate, look at all the debris over here just settling there. I can easily remove it, allowing the water parameters of this tank and the quality to stay perfect and stable all the time. Exactly what discus require. I don't need to do any siphoning. There's not going to be, this tank's not going to age quickly. We're not going to have like old tank syndrome problems or anything like that. And the more the moss grows, the more nutrients it's removing from the tank itself. <laughs> you can kind of see that it's already kind of growing, but obviously if we add some CO2, this stuff's going to explode. Now, one of the things you might notice with like heavily planted tanks is a lot of the times they'll put discus in there, but eventually they all remove the discus. Discus in a heavily planted tank simply don't work out long term. They have too many requirements. They can be a little skittish. And when adding all the nutrients, CO2, et cetera, et cetera, the focus is usually on the plants and not the fish. This is a fun way to have a planted tank where the focus is on the discus and not the plants. Yet the plants are going to do perfectly fine because moss is so low maintenance and requires so little, it's likely going to do fine no matter what you do. So this tank is only going to get better with time. Now you might be thinking 20 discus in a 180 gallon aquarium, that seems like a lot, Joey. Well, the rule of thumb with stocking with discus is simple. 20 gallons for the first fish, 10 gallons for every fish after that. It works out really well in most cases and in most scenarios. For example, if you want to get into discus, I always suggest getting six. It gives you the best chances of success. They do better in groups. It's a natural uh, competition when feeding, so they kind of entice each other to eat. It's a higher possibility of getting a pair or at least getting mixed sexes, so to reduce aggression. Plus having six dilutes that aggression. With 20, everything just multiplies several times over. But with that initial six, 20 gallons for the first fish, 10 gallons for every fish after that. What are we looking at? Around 70 gallons? Yeah. And a 75 to a 90 gallon is perfect for six to even upwards of eight discus if you're going to get into that 90 gallon range. But with 180 gallon, we're looking at being able to keep possibly 17. But that basic rule of thumb applies to most tanks. The bigger the tank gets, the more surface area and oxygen exchange that it offers, which means you can house more fish. That rule of thumb can increase slightly. 20 discus, especially when they get full grown, will make that tank look packed. 20, 24 is the max I would do in a 180 gallon, or 18 to 24 would be the max I would do in a 120 gallon aquarium or in a 180 gallon aquarium. But ordering in 20, especially coming all the way from Bangkok, they could be in a uh, flight from anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. There could potentially be some DOAs. This allows me to have a little bit of buffer, meaning that I'll likely end up with like maybe 14 to 16 of them. However, every time we order from this wholesaler, everything comes in perfect. Fingers crossed it happens again because they arrive next week. And if you're excited to see that, make sure you're subscribed. If you're not already, I'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, and I'll leave you with this. If you guys enjoy these kind of story times, there are some of my favorite is telling a story about something that happened in my hobby like we just did. Check the link in my bio. It's going to take you to Facebook and Instagram. I'm also gonna have a link to all of 2023 where I'm going back to fish stores and aquarium clubs to help promote them, increase their membership, and simply just uh, support them. So I guess I should say, I might just see you soon. <laughs>